Hi, my name is Pierre with the Analyzer team. In this second session, we'll continue exploring how to build a propensity model. Today, we'll cover three topics. First, how to select your variables. Second, how to select an algorithm to run the model. And third, training the model itself. All right, let's dig in. We are now ready to select variables. You always want to think about three types of variables. First is your dependent variable. That's the outcome you're trying to model. In our case, the response rate, or really the response at a record level to um, a particular set of marketing campaigns. Then you have your independent variables. These are the business drivers, the things that cause the outcome that you're trying to model. So in our case, it might be demographics, it might be marketing spend, it might be specific sales and marketing touch points. Last but not least, you want to think about an index variable too. It's not actually needed to run your model, but it's always a really, really good idea for auditability and transparency. It'll, it allows you to make sure that your records are correctly handled from beginning to end. We're now going to go select all our variables. We'll pick the ID as my record index and the response as my dependent variable. That's it. Note that here, because our fill rate is really high, we don't have to worry about filling in missing values. Uh, we'll talk about this uh, in a subsequent video. All right, our variables are selected. We are now going to select our algorithm for our machine learning uh, model. Today, we're going to use the logistic regression classifier because it's the fastest uh, way to go and the simplest algorithm there is. There's a whole bunch of other algorithms you could pick. For the time being, I would have you only keep three in mind. One is logistic regression, simply because it's fast. The other two are random forest and XGBoost. They're both excellent general purpose algorithms that work very well with a broad variety of uh, tabular data. If you want to learn more, go on our blog and you'll find a couple of entries on how to select uh, an algorithm. The next thing I want to talk about is this notion of oversampling. In our case, because we have actually not a ton of positive outcomes in the data set, only about 14%, we're going to oversample these positive outcomes during training to make sure that the model is as accurate as can be. Last but not least, ask yourself whether you need to downsample your data. In our case, it's only 2,000 rows. We're not going to downsample it. If you have a larger data set, you're going to help yourself by downsampling in the early stages of development so that you can run and iterate the model faster. And once you know that your model is configured correctly and yields meaningful results, then you can do a full model on a, a full model run on 100% of the data. But always downsample at first. It'll make you uh, go that much faster. All right, we're now ready to train. Let's train the model. If you've been following along using uh, Jupyter Notebook and Python coding, this is the step where you will need to make sure that you're doing all your pre-processing steps correctly in your Jupyter Notebook, uh, all the data manipulations correctly. In our case, this is handled by the, the platform already. All we have to do is press start and the training will start. That's it, because the data set was fairly small. Uh, the training is already complete. Now we, we're ready to go look at the results. Today, we covered the second part of our series on how to build a propensity model. We covered how to select variables, how to select an algorithm, and how to train the model. Next, we'll focus on interpreting the results. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to check our blog at analyzer.ai slash blog.